Alderney, if you, for those who don't know, is an island in the Channel Islands, um, quite close to France. And one of its most famous points is Alderney Breakwater, which is a massive breakwater that was built by the Victorians starting in 1847. And originally it was over 1,400 metres long. And the Victorians, with absolutely no concept of difficulty, extended this breakwater into water that was over 40 metres deep. They did this by making a big mound of rock that they mined from the island of Alderney. And, and then they built a new superstructure on top of this mound. We're lucky here today to be in the Inst Library of the Institute of Civil Engineers and to have a copy of, not a copy, the original 1947 document, including the, the te original tender which I'm very lucky to be able to touch today. I really didn't imagine I'd have this opportunity uh, when I came today. And also the, the uh, accounts for the construction of the breakwater. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, the statement of works performed by Messrs Jackson and Bean um, for the month ending April uh, 1848. And here it records the amount of stone deposited on the breakwater. Uh, 15,903 tons at uh, one and six a ton. That's uh, seven and a half P in today's prices, although I guess inflation would have increased that. And, and, and it's got all the rates for everything else. They did um, laying rails upon the lower railway, stacking stone in the quarry. Really, it's a, an amazing document to be able to see, let alone to touch. So originally the, the breakwater was a hun, over 1,400 metres long, um, but very soon after, after construction, they had a series of breaches to, in winter storms. Um, one, two or three holes each year were punched through the breakwater and there was a, the government had a board of inquiry to investigate while this was happening and a past president of the Institute of Civil Engineers was appointed to um, investigate it and his recommendation was that the length of the breakwater was reduced to about 800 metres which is the same length it is today. Since the breakwater is reduced in length Although there has been damage to it, it has been much less frequent than it was immediately after construction. Um, and so our, our responsibility now for the, as the States of Guernsey is to maintain the Alderney breakwater, which we do by annual maintenance. We have divers every summer who investigate the areas below water where we can't see. And historically we know this is where the sea gets in and develops openings and cracks in the masonry. And if, if that happens, then once one block gets pulled out of the face, then the other blocks can come out and the whole, and this is how you can get a breach blowing through the breakwater. And we've got some photos of previous breaches that show, show that. So when a breach does happen, which most recently was in 1962 and uh, 1990, then of course we have, to, we have to repair it, which invariably means you have to wait until the storm or storms have passed. And, in particular, in 1962, there was a long period of storms over almost two months that continued to damage the breakwater before the repairs could take place. Very brief bit of history. The breakwater was originally built as a harbour of refuge, at least that's what it was described as. But behind the scenes, the Admiralty were very keen on somewhere to put the fleet near to France, because the French fleet was in Cherbourg and the Navy wanted somewhere where they could keep an eye on the French, who weren't really our friends because this was only 30 years after Napoleon had last been the Emperor. So the Navy decided they wanted the harbour on the side of Albany where they couldn't be seen by the French. Unfortunately, that's the side facing the Atlantic storms and so from that decision day onwards, the decision to put the harbour on the Atlantic side of Albany has led to the challenge, constant maintenance challenge we've had for the past 170 years. And the naval base was only actually closed down in 1922. So since then it really hasn't had a requirement as a, as a naval facility, but it does now protect um, the main, well the only shipping key in Alderney for bringing in all their seaboard goods and fuels. It also protects an anchorage, um, both for local boats and visitors during the summer. But also, it's of, it's of great interest, the breakwater itself, to civil engineers. There's many coastal conferences where papers have been presented trying to explain the forces on Alderney breakwater and breakwaters of that type and how it's, 
how it survives. And it, it really is quite an iconic, it's an iconic structure. If you ever get the opportunity to go and see it, I mean, it is, it is amazing. You stand, even when you're standing at the start of it, it doesn't look that long. It's only when you walk all the 890 metres, you get an appreciation of, of what a, a long, impressive structure it is. I think I've described the breakwater as iconic, and it, it really is quite an honour to follow the numerous previous engineers who have the responsibility for maintaining the breakwater. When I started as a civil engineer, those first faltering steps out of university, you know, I didn't know what life was going to, civil engineering life was going to bring me, but really the variety of work that I've had really exceeded my, my hopes and expectations. To just do things that you know you're making a difference, you're, you're helping keep that breakwater in place or you know, occasionally I, I have built a few new things that are still standing, I'm pleased to say. But I think that's the rewards you get, you get from civil engineering.